everybody. So I'm just out doing a little bit of street tuning with the new wastegate actuator. Um, I got my laptop, got my mega squirt, and I just figured I'd show you a few steps of the process. Maybe you'll learn something along the way. Now street tuning by yourself, it sounds a little dangerous, but what I do is I take the car out into a low traffic area so I don't have a lot of other cars I'm dealing with. I'm not really doing crazy speeds. You don't have to do crazy speeds to tune your boost control. You can use the lower gears to really get it dialed in. Another thing is Mega Squirt is data logging. It has data logging capability. So I take the car out. I don't have to watch the laptop. Don't even have to watch the gauges. Just take it out, drive it, do some pulls, pull over to a safe area, and then I'm using the data logs in Megasquirt to see what happened on those pulls that I just did. So I'm getting ready to take the car out, see what it does on wastegate only, and we'll take it from there. So I modified the view in my tuner studio to really just give me the essentials of what I need. Uh, I got RPM here, throttle position, uh, air uh, intake temperature, coolant temperature, always good to keep an eye on, and boost uh, both the gauge here and a uh, little digital readout so it's really easy to see and boost duty cycle which is the uh, electronic boost controller duty cycle here high eights to about nine PSI on wastegate only. It's a 10 PSI spring, but every setup is gonna be a little bit different, so it's to be expected if it's a little bit off. I could probably preload it more to get a little bit of extra boost on wastegate only, but I'm gonna to try to tune it as is and see if I can get it dialed in the way I want. So the first thing I wanna do is come up here to boost advanced and boost control settings. And I'm gonna be tuning an open loop today, so you wanna make sure this is an open loop and this is all going to depend on what kind of uh, boost control solenoid you have and how it's all wired in and stuff like that. And then over here, I have my overboost protection. And how you figure out your overboost protection is you take whatever you want your overboost to be set at. Let's say I want my overboost protection set at 16 psi. I'm going to take 16, add 14.5, divided by 0.145, and it's going to give me 210 kPa. So at 210 kPa, which is 16 PSI, it's going to cut spark, and that will not allow the car to go over 16 pounds. And this is a very important safety feature of Mega Squirt, and it's super awesome. If you have any sort of problem that causes overboosting, Mega Squirt will cut your power and let you know something is going on. Always click burn before you close stuff. Next, we're going to come up here to our boost control duty table. Now, this was set up for my old wastegate, so I'm going to take this whole thing zero it out, we're starting from scratch. Over on the left here is throttle percentage, and down here are the RPM values, and you can change any of these. This is all gonna vary based on your setup. You might wanna change your RPM cells down here depending on what you're trying to do. So this is how I have mine set up right here. First thing I'm gonna do, down here at idle and cruise, I'm gonna set these to 100, and that means Boost control solenoid is going to be closed. It will cut off all signal to the can, to the wastegate actuator at idle and uh, you know very low throttle and cruise down here. I don't want that thing going crazy all the time. So this is 100. Zero means it's open all the way. Zero means you're running wastegate pressure only up here. So right now, the only thing I'm going to be tuning is high throttle. So I'm going to start by just going a 15% duty cycle all the time. And I take the car out, do the same exact thing, do some pulls, see where the boost sits at 15%. And you want to make small changes to these numbers. Uh, just a few percent here could mean a pound or two of boost. It all depends on your setup, it's all gonna be different. So you wanna always move these numbers very slowly. I'm gonna start out with 15 and see where it puts me for boost. And we're gonna burn it. And again, I'm only tuning full throttle right now. After I do that, then I kind of go into the lower cells. So I'll get that dialed in, show you what it looks like, and then show you what the finished map looks like, just to kind of give you an idea of what yours might look like or the shape it might take. But like I said, it's going to be different on every car. All right, so after a few runs, 50% duty cycle is about what's giving me my 13 pounds flat. And the next thing I want to do is tune the uh, low RPM below the boost threshold, which is down here, typically you can run 
100% duty cycle below a certain RPM and you will never overboost. And this is what you want to do because when your wastegate is held shut for as long as possible, the turbo will be able to spool up faster. Now the tricky part is finding out what RPM you can hold 100% duty cycle up to. And then as the RPM increases here, you're going to have to blend it down to 50 so you still don't go over your 13 pounds. So this just takes some trial and error. Just want to set it up kind of like this. Be really careful. Make sure your overboost protection is turned on and you'll figure out if you run this RPM too high, you'll get boost spikes and it will come back down to 13 pounds here. Or if it's, you know, not high enough, you're, you're losing spool up time. So you really need to push this higher and higher until you start getting a little bit of a boost spike and then back it down. And when you're doing the boost threshold testing, you do want to use a higher gear because it loads the turbo up more. I like to use fourth gear and try to find an uphill to do it on. Sit down around 2,000 RPM and then just wail on it. So after a few more runs, this is what my wide open throttle boost duty curve looks like. I'm shooting for a little bit of extra PSI up in the top. And this whole mid-range area is something I still have to play with a little bit more. Down here in the mid throttle, I really like to have less boost because the car will make full boost at half throttle. And if I'm half throttle, I'm half throttle for a reason. I want less power. So I like to tune it down to, you know, 10, 11 PSI down here. And if I need more boost, I'll get on the throttle and I'll get up into these higher cells and I'll be able to get more power. And that is an awesome thing about this electronic boost control in Mega Squirt is you can vary the boost by RPM and by throttle position. And one thing I don't want to forget to mention is you need to keep an eye on your fueling when you're doing this also. If you're changing boost levels, chances are you're going to have to add or take away some fuel. So I kind of did that behind the scenes on this video. I just wanted it to be about boost control, but you do need to keep an eye on those AFRs and make sure you're staying safe out there. Now, I know this video is pretty short, but to be honest, it is a time-consuming process to dial in this open loop map, especially if you're trying to do tricky stuff and trying to get the boost control as aggressive as possible. So I'm going to keep messing with it a little bit more. So far, this wastegate has been very, very easy to tune compared to the 7-pound Garrett one that I had. I had the boost dipping down in the mid-range. I wasn't changing the duty cycle before, and it, it just was more difficult to tune. Turbo Smart Wastegate Actuator, definitely recommend it. Good product. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.